Hi, eighth grade. Miss Bailey here. Um, I'm just going, it's May 11th, and I'm just going to walk you through uh, what we did today in class in case you missed it or you came late. Um, so everything you're going to need for today is in the Google Classroom, and I have three things posted here. The do now, the class slides, and the symbolism activity. So I'm going to just start off by going over the slides real quick. So um, first thing we did was a do now. Uh, in the Google Classroom, answer the question in two complete sentences. How do the boys use the conch shell? Uh, what do you think the conch represents? So <laughs> I uh, put this meme in here because SpongeBob did a wonderful um, connection to Lord of the Flies in an episode, and they had the conch. Uh, and I just think that's a funny thing to think about. But okay, so sentences here. The boys use the shell to... And the shell represents, so, okay, go back into the Google Classroom. The do now is here. It has that same question here. You can see Isaiah's answer there, but here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I would recommend doing. I would copy these sentence starters. Click on here, and I would copy them. Oop, that's not what I want to do. Copy, and then I would put in my comment. And the boys use the shell to... I'm going to go over it right now. So if you're watching the video, I'm giving you the answer. They use the shell to call meetings. They blow in it like a horn. And they, and as a talking piece. So when they have a meeting, whoever's holding the shell gets to talk. Just like what we do when we have a peace circle. Um, and the deeper meaning that William Golding, the author, is trying to say, the shell represents laws or law or order. I'm going to say order because it's like the idea that they, they have an order that people talk and they have rules to follow. Or you could say even government, some people say. Um, you could hit submit. Um, okay, so then I gave people five minutes to do that. And then we quickly went over our learning targets. I can interpret the meaning of symbols in The Lord of the Flies. And I can analyze quotes from The Lord of the Flies to match the quote to the appropriate symbol. Okay, we're gonna, we quickly reviewed Chapter 9. And then we went right into our symbolism activity. So here's the Zoom expectations, Google Classroom expectations we've been over before. Um, and then again, I included all the, the review videos here. So if I want to remember what happened in Chapter 2, I could just click on here and I could watch that YouTube video. We watched the Chapter 9 video. I highly recommend uh, just to, before you do this activity, I would pause my video and I would watch 8 and 9 because important things happen in 8. We meet the Lord of the Flies, and then in 9, something terrible happens to Simon. And both of those are very important things to understand, I think, for the symbolism activity. So make sure I would watch the 8 video, click on it, open it up, and I would watch this video. And then I would watch the Chapter 9 video, too. Okay, but moving on. Um, then we started doing the symbolism activity. For each symbol, match the appropriate quote and meaning to the symbol. Click and drag the quote that matches the given symbol to the middle box of the corresponding row, and then click and drag the meaning to the place in the meaning in the last box of the corresponding row. So that sounds very confusing. So I'm going to show you the activity. Again, I'm going back into Google Classroom really quick. Disregard. Um, so then, okay, the symbol is an activity is the first thing here. Now, if you're doing this at a later time, all these activities are in I look in my, did I just go to the classwork section? All the activities for this lesson are in week, quarter four, Q4 of week seven of Lord of the Flies. We have the symbolism and the do now if you're doing this at a later time. Okay, so uh, again, the symbolism activity, I want to open up this. Three people have already turned it in. That's awesome. But we're going to go ahead and open it up and need to open up your slides. Maybe you need to click view. Uh, document or view file. Okay, so the first thing here I have on the first slide is a map. This shows us the island the boys are stranded on. It shows us where the plane crashed. It shows us the mountain and then it shows us where the pit, they see the pigs running and they end up hunting the pigs. It shows us where they end up putting the pig head after they put it on the stick. It shows us where their huts are. The lagoon they swim in and bathe in and then the castle rock becomes very important on chapter nine. Uh, it shows you the beach. Um, so just a, a good view of it. And then I wanted to show you, this is the original uh, book's uh, cover page, or cover. Okay, so what is a symbol? 
A symbol is a person, place, or thing or event that stands for itself and something beyond itself. So again, we talked about that shell. The shell represents itself in the book. They use it as a horn, they use it as a talking piece, but it also represents this, this something beyond it. It rep represents the bigger meaning of laws, government, order. It's that idea that it doesn't just represent a shell, it represents that bigger idea. And William Golding uses extensive symbolism in The Lord of the Fly Flies to convey or to show his ideas about human nature and the themes he is presenting. Again, those big major themes of savagery versus civilization and are people good or bad. And then these are the same directions I just read you on the other slide. Uh, and again, they're a little confusing, so I want to show you. I think it's better to, to watch. Okay, so over here I have the symbol or the thing or the place. So again, I have the conch here. And then I've got Piggy's glasses, and I've got the fire on this slide. And so I've got three quotes. So we're going to have a quote here, quote here, quote here. And then we've got a meaning. Our meanings are down here in the red box. We have to put a meaning here, a meaning here, a meaning here. Okay. So uh, let's read through this quote, and then we'll try and see which one of these it matches with. If a ship comes near the island, they may not notice us. So we must make smoke on top of the mountain. We must make a fire. Okay, so that's not talking about a shell. That's not talking about glasses. Yes, that's talking about a fire. So I'm gonna click on it. And then remember, you have to wait till you get the white four arrows. And then I click and I drag it over and I'm gonna put it in the quote box, right? Okay, then the next one. I'll give the conch to the next person to speak. He can hold it when he is speaking, page 33. Okay, they're talking about the conch shell. So we're gonna click and drag. Oh, see, that might happen, it's okay. You can just hit the undo button, or you can just click and drag it back. Click on here, wait till you get your four things, click and drag over here. Okay, then the last one, his specs, use them as burning glasses. Okay, there we go. That's pretty straightforward. It's talking about glasses that they use to make the fire. There's his glasses. Okay, so now the meanings. These ones can be harder. Okay, discovery. I don't think the shell represents discovery. Glasses, maybe. Fire, no, they... The glasses. The glasses represent discovery or science. They use them to discover how to make the fire. So it's idea of science or reason. Discovery represents Piggy and his glasses. All right. Rescue. Um, I don't think the shell is going to get them rescued. The fire. They think that the fire will, will get a ship's attention and they will get rescued. So the fire represents being rescued. And then again, as I stated in the do now, the shell represents order. Okay, so uh, I went over this whole slide with you. I'm not going to go through all the other slides, but I am going to go through and read through the quotes. So I would pause this video right now and go do this slide. Moving on to the next one. Okay, I'm going to read through the quotes for you, but I'm not going to click and drag them. You're going to have to do that on your own. Okay, so the symbols on this slide, I've got the beast, I've got Jack's knife or dagger, and the island. Okay, so, kill the pig, cut her throat, bash her in. Does that represent the beast, the knife, or the island? Click and drag it, and you can pause my video at any time and do any of these as I'm reading them. A beast with claws that scratched, that sat on the mountaintop, that left no tracks. Okay, again, is that talking about the beast, the knife, or the island? The last one. We... We may stay here till we die, page 14. Okay, what are they talking about? Stay here, where is here? Is it the beast, the knife, the island? Um, okay, and then the meanings. Um, violence, does the beast represent a violence? Does the knife represent violence or the island? Fear, the beast, the knife, the island. Which one represents fear? Isolation, which one of these represents isolation? Again, you're clicking and dragging. Okay, again, I would pause and complete this whole slide before you having me read the next ones. Okay, so you should be done with the slide. Now I'm moving on to the next one. Okay, our last three uh, symbols. Here I've got the Lord of the Flies, which is the pig head on the stake. I've got the face paint that Jack and the other hunters wear. And I've got the scar. The scar is the um, mark on the island that's left from the plane crash. It's all the trees knocked down. There's a Big line of dirt, a scar, they call it. Okay. 
like in war, you know, dazzle paint, like things trying to look like something else on page 63. Are they talking about the pig head, the face paint, or the scar? The long scar smashed into the jungle. It was a bath of heat on page one. Again, which one are they talking about? Click and drag it. The head remained there, dim-eyed, grinning faintly, blood blackening between the teeth. Again, are they talking about the pig head, the face paint, or the scar? So which one of these represents savagery, complete loss of civilization? Click and drag it. Violence and destruction. So again, you're putting dragging the meanings into the meaning column. Okay, um, and then on this last slide, I just went ahead and I gave you guys some funny memes that have to do. You should have read chapter nine, and I thought this one was really funny. It says, Lord of the Flies, chapter one. Okay, guys, let's all work together and get off this island. Lord of the Flies, chapter nine. This is a stick everybody's <laughs> against each other, you know. Um, it's this idea that everything, they start to really lose their civilization and they really become pretty savage in chapter nine is really a turning point. Um, and then, again, I told you about the Spongebob one and the uh, class slides. And then this one I thought was funny, too. Remember, this is a juxtaposition of the, the character Simon. Um, so remember, Ralph is the one that really wants the fire going. But then Simon is just, like, really peaceful. He's not scared of a beast. He goes on the, uh, the island on his own all the time. Ralph, so this is like a fake text as if they had phones. Ralph texting Simon. What do you think, Simon? Do you think there's a beast on the island? And then Simon says, I think there's a beast inside all of us. And the mouth was like, why are you like this? Like, crazy person, Simon. Like, and that's, that's a main theme is that everyone really thinks Simon is crazy, but actually Simon is the only one who's not crazy, which is interesting. Interesting theme going on there, too. Um, and, and on another side, we're going to talk about the symbol of each character and what each character symbol symbolizes. But right now, I just want you to talk about these things from the novel. Um, and again, make sure you click turn in when you're done and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks.